does Lucas Raymond have the potential to be the game-breaking winger the Red Wings have needed, and how does he compare to Johnny Goudreau? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to the Sports Analyst. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Lucas Raymond, such an interesting player in the 2020 NHL entry draft. A lot of comparisons were made between him and Alexander Holtz as to who was the better goal scorer and who was the better winger coming out of Sweden this year. Of course, Lucas Raymond does end up getting drafted higher than Alexander Holtz at fourth. Holtz, of course, going to the Devils shortly after. And so I want to take a deep dive here into what Lucas Raymond has done since the draft. What did he do going up to the draft? What can we make from that? And then how does he fit in with the Red Wings system, knowing that they have young players like Joe Valeno, Jonathan Berggren, how is Michael Rasmussen fitting into this? Of course, Philip Sedina being that main piece. And then how does he compare to someone like Johnny Goudreau? So if this sounds interesting to you, of course, subscribe for more content. Uh, I have more hockey videos coming out shortly. If you're interested in any football content, recently done three videos related to that, Joe Burrow versus uh, Joe, uh, J- J- Justin Herbert. Then I also did a deep look at top running backs as well as Justin Jefferson. More to come there as well. So subscribe for more content. If you're interested in that, of course, hit that thumbs up. Check out my Twitter and Patreon. Let's get right into this one. So Lucas Raymond, 18 years old. The birthday was May 28th. And so relatively young for this draft. Of course, many players are much younger than him, some being older. But Lucas Raymond definitely is one of the younger players being developed into the Red Wings system right now, just 18 years old. Might end up making the Red Wings this year, given the fact that he is playing in the SHL currently, does have an out in his contract to be able to come over to the Red Wings system. And whether or not he plays this full year in the SHL or then comes to the NHL or not, it'll be interesting to see what he does with his development, because as we know, he's doing very well in the SHL for Forlunda, the same system that Rasmus Dahlin came from just a couple years ago. And so he is 5'10", 183. He does have a little bit more size than someone like Cam Atkinson, who is 5'8", both are right wingers. Johnny Goudreau is a left winger, but Lucas Raymond also plays on the left, equally can do both. And given the fact that Zadina can do both as well, but it likes to play on the right side, it might make sense to see a line of Lucas Raymond on the left, and then someone like Dylan Larkin in the middle, Zadina on the right. Obviously, you have other guys like Tyler Bertuzzi and Anthony Mantha who'd want to claim into that role. And so you definitely could see that being a top line, second line long term, hopefully being Raymond Valeno Zadina. And we, you know, we'll see if that develops what happens there. I think Zadina could easily challenge for a number one line spot, as could Raymond. But I think there's a lot of options here with his versatility. And Johnny Goudreau being a left winger, 5'9", 165, I think there's a good comparison here. And so Raymond, like I said, 5'10", 183, does boast decent size for being on the smaller side. And being that fourth overall pick, obviously a lot of hype from this draft, being selected after some very talented players, of course, Tim Stutzla, Quentin Byfield, and Alexis Lafreniere. And so if you look at his draft year for Falunda, SHL, 33 games played, 4 goals, 6 assists, 10 points, 4 penalty minutes as well. Didn't really go off the page as this amazing score. Of course, not bad numbers for a 17-year-old. But the story was that there was so much more potential here. And as a 17-year-old, to already get 10 points, 4 goals in a men's league already is impressive enough. In fact, the year before that, as just a 16-year-old, he got 10 SHL games, 2 goals. So Lucas Raymond has always been challenging to be playing better than the level that he's already at. He Last year, he played at the World Juniors under 18 when he was just 16 years old. Seven games played, four goals, four assists, eight points. This past season, as a 17-year-old, got to play at the under 20s. Seven games played, two goals, two assists, four points. So Lucas Raymond has always been playing so much better than the competition he's been getting, considering his age level. Not much of a, a penalty-type player, Draft year, only four penalty minutes. Then in the World Juniors, only two. The year before, uh, four as well. So we're not seeing a lot. This year, currently for the SHL, we're seeing a tremendous growth in Lucas Raymond's game from being 17 to 18 years old. I think being that fourth overall pick, having such expectation is really helping him. 13 games played for Falunda, five goals, two assists, seven points. And what we've really been talking about is that Lucas Raymond has elite-level passing, elite-level playmaking, But he has an untapped potential in gore scoring ability that just isn't being unleashed. And Alexander Holtz is being talked of as the next Patrick Laine, someone that has true boom or bust 30 40 goal potential, but we're not as sure how that's going to happen in the defensive zone. Whereas Lucas Raymond is very responsible in the defensive end, very good two way game, 
very good hockey IQ, good down ice vision. And so we see a lot of nice abilities that the Red Wings can build around. The question is, can Lucas Raymond become an elite level goal scorer? And I think there is a trend that we will see in Johnny Goudreau's game that I think will really reflect in what I want to talk about for Lucas Raymond. Now, obviously, Philip Zadina has 30 to 40 goal potential, and I don't think any of us can deny the fact that he easily can be 25 goals this year, if not 30. And so to have someone like Zadina, who's that good, to have someone like Joe Valeno and Dylan Larkin, who are known to be better playmakers and, and a speedster in Larkin, and then have Mantha as another goal scorer, to have someone like Raymond, who could be a bit of an off-tempo type player, to break up there, have these playmaking abilities, drive to the net, but then also be able to uh, chip in with this great wrist shot that he has. I think Lucas Raymond will be a nice dynamic for that team. They don't already have something like that. And so I want to focus on what Lucas Raymond currently right now, I want to focus on what he brings to his game. Well, he's a great skater. And I think Johnny Goudreau, there's such a comparison here. You see a lot of players that are undersized and what do they bring to their game that makes them better? They play bigger than they are. And how does someone do that? You play with amazing skating and amazing speed. And you see that with Johnny Goudreau, clear fit. You see that with Cam Atkinson, Matt Zuccarello, uh, Keller Yamamoto. You see it constantly with these players. Emil Bemstrom breaking out with the Columbus Blue Jackets this year, 5'10". You see that. So you constantly see this type of concept of these players being able to play at such a high level if they're high speed, high energy, great skating. And Lucas Raymond fits that to a T. He has very good hands, very soft hands, allows him to transition the puck very easily, and this is why you see a very good wrist shot for him. What I would like to see is a better slap shot. And while he's not necessarily being used like that on the power play, necessarily in the back at the point, Zadina we know can do that tremendously. And so you would like to see someone who can also do what Zadina's doing, but on the other side of the power play. To have two extremely volatile, tight players on the power play would be amazing for the Red Wings. And even if you shift it up, having one on the first unit, having one on the second unit, this would give them a lot of power. We already know Mantha is that power forward type player drives it in at with grit. And so to build in another gritty power forward, I think is really going to help the team. I don't see Lucas Raymond as a power forward simply because he is only 5'10", and that's not the game he plays. But if you can build in more of a physicality and then build in an even better slap shot because he has a good wrist shot, you're going to see a lot more power generated from his game. And you don't see someone like Johnny Goudreau playing on the periphery. You see them really getting into the thick of it. Same with Kyler Yamamoto. And that's how these type players play. But I think Lucas Raymond has the potential to be the best of all of these players that we're naming. And the way he can do this is to evolve his game now into encompassing uh, more of peripheral play, see how he does from there. Now, he does play at a very high level. Like I said, very good speed, very good wrist shot. 200-foot game I really want to highlight here. When we're talking about players that come out of the draft with an effective 200-foot game, there's been some players that have come out immediately, and we've said this. Pierre-Louis Dubois was a very quick one. Played as a winger in that draft year, shifted to the center the next year, and there was questions on what is his uh, potential long-term. Could he have been too high of a pick at third? Clearly looks like a good pick now, but what we knew was his two-way game is very well built, and no matter what, he's going to be a mid-six center because of that. We know from this point, Lucas Raymond, no matter what, is going to be a mid-six player simply because he has a very developed two-way game. Given that his size is what it is, you would hope he's going to be a top six player, obviously has the potential to be a top line player. But to minimum, have that two-way game is fantastic. Alexander Holtz being much more of a, a goal scorer just in his overall abilities. And I think Raymond and Holtz could definitely be comparable, 30, 35 goals. But just the way they process the game is different. You can see someone like Patrick Laine and Kim Atkinson, both are goal scorers, and yet Patrick Laine processes it in terms of what can I do to make that goal, whereas Kim Atkinson oftentimes is setting up someone else, but then also making that goal when it's necessary, and of course still having 30, 35 goals. So we see this different type of mentality in the play, and I think Lucas Raymond has that. I do want to see him bulk up, because I think the game that he's playing it, if you want to play in a Red Wing system that is going to be built around driving to the net, built around speed, youth, and physicality, I want to see more physicality in his in his build. I want to see him bulk up. I want to see him hit closer to 200. Now, 5'10", 183 definitely is respectable. Like I said, Johnny Goudreau, 165, 5'9", Kyler Yamamoto, 150. And so I do like what he has. I want to see him keep build, uh, bulking up there as well. Now, I want to focus on what the Red Wings lines look like, and then a comparison to Johnny Goudreau here. 
So the Red Wings, like I said, Tyler Bertuzzi, Dylan Larkin, and Anthony Mantha, that really is your top line. Because Bobby Ryan has now entered the system this year, of course, he'll be there as like a stopgap. And then you have Vlad, uh, Vladislav Domestikov, Philip Sedina. So that, that could be a top six right there. But then you do have people, Robbie Fabry, where did they go? Valerie uh, Filippa, Sam Gagne. These are players that are going to be challenging. Of course, Evgeny Svechnikov hasn't worked out, but he's still there. Uh, Joe Valeno does have so much potential. I think Max, he's probably a second-line center, but that easily could be there. Jonathan Berggren is now over a point per game in the SHL this year. Michael Rasmussen looks to be a bit of a bust at this point. Uh, debatable how much of a bust, but you know you would like to think that he can round out his game, be a third-line center. And so I think long-term what we're looking at, if Raymond comes into the league this year, I think he has the ability, if Bobby Ryan does not step up and immediately play at a high level for a team that is going to be lacking in scoring, if he doesn't immediately set up, I think he's going to be shifted to the third line. Robbie Fabry will, of course, be someone who could take that second line spot, but I think Lucas Raymond will be given every opportunity to do so, have him play with Domestikov and Zadina, and then have Bertuzzi playing with Larkin and Mantha. Now, if Valeno makes the team or Berrigan, obviously the story evolves a little bit uh, more here. And I think Valeno will be given more of a smaller role at first, third line center, whereas Raymond, I think, will be given a lot more immediately. But I think long term, if you can see a top six that has Bertuzzi, Larkin, Mantha, Raymond, Valeno, Zadina, and in any combination of that, I think that is a very effective system. And to know that Zadina and Raymond can play at different wings, I think this is going to be so many options. I think the Red Wings are doing a lot of good things here. Of course, building with some really nice players on that defense, Wallander, Sider, uh, McIsaac, so many different uh, players as well, Chalowski. So they're really building a nice system here. Now, I want to compare this to Johnny Goudreau. Like I said, 5'9", 165 is that left winger. In his career, 464 games played, 151 goals, 294 assists, 455 points for .96 points per game, only 100 penalty minutes. And so what we see here is Johnny Goudreau really isn't uh, a physical player in the sense of getting penalties. But what he does bring is consistency. Now, this year, obviously, consistency was an issue. Energy output was an issue. Calgary having many issues in that department. But what Johnny Goudreau brings is consistency in numbers, and I want to focus on this. So this year, despite only 58 points, a bit of a down year, obviously only in 70 games, he did have 40 assists. The year before, he had 63 assists, then 60 assists, then 43, 48, and 40. So obviously, this was the lowest amount since his rookie year. But as we see, he is consistently being expected to at least get 40 assists. And four times, or excuse me, three times in his career, he was above 48 or above, two times 60 or above. So Johnny Goudreau constantly can be expected to do that. And I think Lucas Raymond easily could be an 80-point player. I think we could see 50 assist potential, 30 goal potential, 80 points right there. It will take a few years to get to that level, but I think we certainly can be expecting that minimum. I think 40 assists, 20 goals. And what we see from Johnny Goudreau is even more consistency like that. And so goals this year in 70 games, 18 goals. The year before, 36 then 24, then 18 and 72, then 30, and then 24. So if we expand out the 18s both to 82 games, balance it all out, we're roughly at a little bit short on that 72 season, but roughly at 24 goals or more every single season. Obviously, one in 36, one in 30. But to say you're a 24 goal scorer every single year, we could, we could push it up to 25. We could even say just simply you're a 20 goal scorer, factoring it in that way. So to have consistency, always a forty goals or always a forty assist player, always a twenty goal scorer at sixty points. This is the base level minimum that Lucas Raymond will be playing at. And so to know that you drafted someone fourth overall minimum, he's a sixty point player. Gonna add in twenty goals that wasn't there prior, and a great two way player. This is what you're adding in Lucas Raymond. But to build this comparison even farther, how does Johnny Goudreau stylistically compare to Lucas Raymond? Well, he plays with very high energy. He's always involved in the play always trying to make things better for his team. Like I said, this year there were some issues there. Obviously, trade talk, part of it. Very good skating, very good speed. But what I think is the best comparison we can make is both are amazing passers. The playmaking ability that they have, and they do this through very good down ice vision and very good hockey IQ, setting up the play, understanding how it's going to develop. And this is what I think is the best comparison between the two. They're very cerebral players in this sense. We've talked about the term cerebral many times on this channel. And I think they really exude what that means. Uh, Goudreau also is a good goal scorer. And like I said, it's not something that we're really talking about. We don't talk about him as just a natural goal scorer. We, we think about him as, as a passer. But last year, when he had 99 points, 
He had 63 assists, 36 goals. And so this really is someone that is taking off here. The more points you're going to get, naturally, the more goals you're going to get. I want to focus on what points he's done each year. 58 this year in 70 games played. The year before, 99, then 84, 61, which was in 72 games, 78, and 64. So if you expand that 70 and 72 season to 82 games, each year he's had 64 or more points. And if you balance it out across, like I said, it is 0.96 points per game. So we're looking at about 78 points every single season if you balance it. That is phenomenal. And so to see that's more on your higher end of what Lucas Raymond could be, that minimum 60 points per season, and on that higher end like Goudreau has done, 80 points per season, Raymond, like I said, easily can be in this department. What a good comparison here. Both amazing playmakers, but I do think Goudreau needs to work on that physicality. I mean, it is just part of his game. We know that. And so when I say Lucas Raymond needs to bulk up, needs to build in that respect, I think there's so much of a comparison here as to terms of what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. But the difference is, the one difference in the comparison is Johnny Goudreau is not as good of a two-way player. He's not as relied on the penalty kill. They're having moments, of course. But Lucas Raymond is someone that easily can step up and be a consistent first unit, second unit, penalty type player. You expect that. From such a young player, he's going to be able to do that. Johnny Goudreau, not as much. And it's not a bad thing if you know what you're getting from a player. If you're getting a 60 to 80 point player, that's what you're getting, of course. But if you can get that as well as a two-way player, what an amazing thing to do. And so I think this is really where Lucas Raymond falls. It's going to be between 60 and 80 points, low end, high end, depending on how he shakes up there. Johnny Goudreau really has shown the low end and the high end of where Lucas Raymond will fit. I think stylistically it's a very good fit. The Red Wings lines look to be a great fit for him as well. So comment below your thoughts. What do you think of Lucas Raymond? How do you think he compares to Alexander Holtz? What prospect do you want to see me do a video on next, whether that's hockey or football? Subscribe for more content, and I look forward to talking to you guys in the next video.